Good morning to you all and uh, welcome uh, to the service here today and we are obviously continuing under the restrictions there are because of the uh, pandemic and all of that implies but unfortunately there are additional problems that we have uh, today. Uh, sadly uh, Steph has uh, proved positive for Covid, she's not feeling too unwell but it does mean that uh, she and the family, all the children have to uh, self-isolate and it is not possible of course for either Steve or Steph for them to come over and uh, help with all the technical stuff that is needed when we normally do broadcast our services. However, we are using this other means, uh, but there are uh, things we won't be able to do. We won't be able to do any projection at all. Uh, but uh, we will be able to look to the Word of God and to consider what He is saying to us, and that, of course, is the most significant and important thing uh, for us. So we thank Him that that is the case, and we pray that He will indeed be pleased to bless in a very powerful way, a mighty way, as we do come again to meet together uh, in this fashion, that we may not miss out on any of the blessings that He has for us. and. We do look to him and seek him uh, as we come together. Please do uh, share in this and seek each one of us that we might know the true glory of the Lord being in our lives and helping us in this act of worship. Turn first of all to the book of Psalms, to Psalm 33, and I read verses 4 and 5. Psalm 33, verses 4 and 5. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Let's pray. Loving God and Father, as we come together to worship again here, we pray, Lord God, that you would be pleased in your grace and mercy to uh, join together with us. Lord, you are fully aware, of course, of the particular problems that we do have at this time, and we pray, Lord, that you would overrule in all those, and that, Lord, you would truly manifest your grace and your glory. Lord, even though we are meeting in different places, different homes, whatever it might be, may we have that due sense of reverence and awe as we come together in the presence of God, seeking him and knowing uh, that blessing that he alone is able to meet out to us. Lord, just draw near, help us in all that we have to do, that, Lord, indeed, your name may be glorified, that this might be a truly blessed time for us. We do thank you, Lord, that you are our God, and we pray that you would indeed hear our prayers now and bless us beyond all our expectations. In Jesus' name, Amen. As I said at the beginning, we won't be able to be doing any projections, so we won't be having a children's talk today, but I just want to run through the uh, answers to the questions from uh, the children's talk last week. We were uh, looking at the account of Joshua and the Gibeonites, and uh, various questions were asked. The first one, what plan did the Gibeonites devise and why? Why? Well, they decided that they only lived just uh, three days distance from the Israeli encampment. Uh, they decided, because of the way things have been going, the conquest of Ai and so on, that uh, they would devise some plan to order not to be attacked. And what they did, they sent uh, some of their men uh, with uh, bread and wine and uh, so, uh, to uh, the Israelites. But what they had done was to make sure that the bread uh, was not fresh, it was mouldy, that the wine uh, <coughs> containers were split, broken, and not of much use, and that their sandals were all worn out. And they... Um, uh, decided to make out to Joshua and to the Israelites that they had in fact travelled a great distance to be with them. What did they say and show Joshua? They said those things. They said, look, we, we've travelled a long, long way and uh, when we set out the bread was fresh but now that is no longer the case and uh, we have broke, got broken wineskins and our sandals are worn out. What did Joshua say to them? Well, he made peace with them. He believed them and uh, uh, he made peace with them. But then later, when Joshua discovered the deception, what did he do? 
Well, he could not uh, uh, attack them because he had made a covenant with them and uh, he made that before the Lord and that had to be kept, so he let them live. What were the Gibeonites commanded to do? Well, as a result of their deception, they were commanded to serve the Israelites by bringing those, being those that would bring uh, water and wood and all the necessary things that were needed for the uh, uh, Israelites in that uh, various ways. And that happened, that continued actually for many, many years after this event in uh, Crawley Forest in the book of Joshua. Well, as we turn uh, now to our main prayer, uh, again, uh, we're not able to project birthdays, but we can remember those. They're celebrating their birthdays. And tomorrow, uh, Paseo will be celebrating her birthday. We pray the Lord will be with her, bless her particularly, and use her and uh, continue to guide and direct her. And then also for Luke, as he celebrates his birthday on uh, on uh, Wednesday. We pray Lord, that he too may know the Lord's presence with him. That might be a very special day for him and the family. Lord, do be with him in all that he does. And Lord, do encourage him uh, and continue to lead him. We do pray. And then we'll be remembering Todju as we come together to think of our students this morning. Remember her and the studies she's doing and all that she has to get done and involved in. We pray the Lord be with her in those things. Let's then shall we now come to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Again, O loving God, we come before you and we seek, Lord, that we might truly be aware of who you are. That, Lord, you are truly God. Lord, that you are the one who is glorious, indeed all glorious, all powerful. That, Lord, you are all knowing, you are ever present. And we thank you, Lord that your presence is that which is with us wherever we might be. And Lord, we do ask you that it might please you on this occasion where not only we are having the normal difficulties with the service and uh, with the restrictions that we have to abide to, but Lord, there are these additional concerns today. But Lord, we know that you are fully aware of this. You know this is no surprise to you. This has not come out of the blue as it were. It's all in your providence and all indeed in your grace and mercy. And we pray, Lord, that you'll use these uh, means. We thank you, Lord, that you have given uh, these means for our use, that you have enabled uh, those with the particular abilities to devise uh, these special ways in which we can keep in touch and contact one with another. And we can, although we are separated, Lord, we can indeed worship you all together. And we ask, Lord God, that that indeed might be the power and the might as we do come together in our worship here today, that, Lord, we may truly know that we are meeting with the living God, that uh, it matters not in a way who else might be there, as long as, Lord, we know that you are, that we might be drawn closer to you, we might see you, Lord, in that glory, we might see you in that power, that, Lord, we might be truly uh, reverent before you and truly submissive to all your will, uh, all the commands that you have given to us. We do thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've showered upon Upon us, Lord, we know that perhaps we uh, all too often just concentrate on the things that are difficulties and problems. But Lord, we praise you that even in these, as we indeed were reminded last week, we know that glorious power of your grace. We know that uh, way in which, Lord, you use those trials, you use those difficulties uh, to uh, for our benefit, for our blessing, for our growth and our deepening and our knowledge of yourself. And we pray that may continue to be so. The Lord, today it might be a very special day, a glorious day, when we see you descending in great power and might upon your people and working throughout this land. For Lord, our land needs that work. Our land needs your reviving power. It needs that demonstration of your grace and your might. For Lord, there is no other answer. There is no other way in which the particular needs of our nation can be dealt with. There's no other way in which the uh, sin that is so prevalent can be uh, destroyed that, Lord, you would work forth in your grace. We know, Lord, that you are, are so able to do so. And, Lord, we have seen this in history so many times when there have been very, very difficult times, when there have been pandemics, been the plagues. But, Lord, you have worked. 
You have acted and you have uh, ensured that your church reigns strong and secure. For Lord, it is your church. And Lord, as you have uh, promised, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, Satan cannot destroy your church. Satan cannot destroy your people. Satan cannot bring that church down. For Lord, it is your church. And Lord, you have secured its foundation. You have secured its security. And Lord, we do praise you for this. And may we be aware of this, that Lord, we have that glorious privilege of being members of your church, not because we have decided so to do, not because we have brought some particular gift, not because we are a particular character, but Lord, solely and simply because of the glory and the might of your grace, that Lord, we who are lost and dead in our trespasses and sins, who were totally cut off from the things of God, Lord, you have come and you have entered into our experience. You have revived us. You have made us live again. And that glorious work of regeneration has taken place. How we praise you, Lord God, that that is so, that you have worked in this mighty way. And Lord, we desire to see many more come into that experience, many more knowing that same knowledge, knowing what it is truly to rest and trust in you. Lord, be pleased, as we said, to come down upon this land, to come down upon those in authority, to come down with those in the media, to come down, Lord, with those who totally reject you at this moment. Might it be that even this day, Lord, they will be changed totally and utterly. And Lord, do keep Satan at bay. Lord, destroy his work. Lord, we pray that your church may be truly revived, that, Lord, we might fully and completely turn to your word, the authority, the power of that word, the might of that word, the glory of that word. Oh, Lord, use it. Help us, we pray. Lord, show us of yourself. Lord, amaze us indeed with the blessing you shower upon us. Even now at this moment, Lord, do work in this way, we pray. Lord, we would remember those who will be celebrating their birthdays this week. We pray, Lord God, you'll be with them. We say, oh, tomorrow we thank you, Lord, for her. And we pray, Lord God, that you would surround her with your grace and your love, your mercy. May she know you in a very special way as she celebrates that birthday. And also for Luke on Wednesday, do thank you, Lord, for him. And we pray that that might be a very special day for him. Lord, do indeed be with him, particularly at this time, be with the family as uh, staff has been uh, tested positive for COVID. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep us strong, that, Lord, you may soon deal with this and that you'll be with the family, the particular uh, needs they have at this time and the particular problems they have to deal with. Oh, Lord, bless them in this. Help them in this, we ask. Lord, may they know your glory and your grace. We pray for told you, Lord. We do thank you for her. And we pray, Lord God, that you would reach out to her, that, Lord, you would show of yourself, you would make yourself known, that, Lord, you would manifest your grace in her life, that, Lord, she may truly know and guide her, Lord, as to what she should be doing, the way she will walk, Lord, the things that she should be involved in. Oh, Lord, help her. Aid her in this, we plead. Show her, Lord, of yourself. Make your name known. Make your grace known to her. And Lord, we do pray for all those that are in particular need. We pray particularly, Lord, for those who have been bereaved as a result of the coronavirus. We pray for the NHS and all involved in seeking to give help. And we pray, Lord, for the government, that, Lord, you'll give them wisdom, you'll give them grace, that, Lord, you would work in a mighty way there, that, Lord, they may do those things which are good and benefit to the people, and, Lord, they might acknowledge their uh, uh, the need they have to do all things for you, that, Lord, they are responsible to you, that they must give account of all that they do decide and all that they do. Guide them in this, we pray. And, Lord, be with others, Lord, that are suffering in various ways. We know, Lord, in our own number, those who are unwell, who have particular needs and concerns at this time, who are facing problems that perhaps they had never, ever thought they would have to face. We pray, Lord God, that you'll be with them, that, Lord, you would manifest grace in their lives. Show, Lord, yourself. Show your grace. Show your might. Show your power. And, Lord, help us. As today, again, we turn together to your word. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that the Bible is the living word of God. 
that, Lord, it is the almighty word of God, that, Lord, you are the one who has given us that word. You have raised up those who recorded that word for us, that, Lord, you have shown yourself in this. How we praise you, Lord God, for the might and the power of your word. Oh, Lord God, manifest your grace, Lord, we pray. Lord, just show us, speak to us. Lord, help us to know what it is that we should learn, what it is that we should do. May we be truly responsive to your word. May we be truly responsive to, Lord, all that you command us to do. May we be faithful. May our lives show forth your grace, your might in every area. Oh, Lord, do bless us, help us, aid us, we plead. Lord, in your mighty name, do come down. Lord, help us. We do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, could we turn together to the scriptures now, please, and to the letter to the Hebrews and chapter 11, and I read from verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 32. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword, went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, and all these through... Uh, all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. May God be pleased to bless his word to our hearts and help us now as we turn again to the first letter of Peter, 1 Peter and chapter 1, and we look today at verses 10 12 of that chapter 1 Peter 1 and verses 10 to 12 Peter says concerning this salvation the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully inquiring what person or time the spirit of Christ in them was indicated when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories it was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in the things that have now been announced to you, through those who have preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Well, may God help us as we prayed, as we do look at that portion of his word. Prophecy and revelation. Two vital and important things. And so vital to what Peter has been saying already concerning that faith that is ours. And what that faith means and how that faith and that trust in the Lord, that faith that he has given to us, can and does keep us in the most trying and the most difficult times of our lives. And we rejoice and we glorify in that. But as he speaks, uh, uh, as spoken of that faith and the salvation that is ours in Christ. So he brings to us now the foundation for that truth. How do we know about this faith? How do we know that it is reliable? How do we know what uh, blessing that is for us and what this is? Well, it is because of the prophecies and the revelation that God has given. It's because he has revealed himself in his word. In these verses we see, firstly, the Old Testament prophets taught, taught the doctrine of salvation. Secondly, they researched and investigated this subject. 
Thirdly, they try to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit pointed. And fourthly, the Spirit predicted Christ's sufferings and glory. And it's so important that we see this, that we understand this, that we know this. We see what these prophecies mean for us and the way that God has revealed his grace and mercy through those. Well, concerning the aspect of prophecy, first of all, in verses 10 and 11, we read, just remind you of that, concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicated when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. They prophesied. Concerning this salvation, the prophets prophesied. In other words, they were given a word, a very special word, the God-given word. Not that he just dictated that to them, but he moved, as Peter indeed reminds us, and we mention this later, in his second letter, they were moved or carried along by the Holy Spirit. He was directing them and using their own personalities, using their own experiences and abilities uh, that God showed his word. And this is why we have, of course, uh, such different forms of literature throughout the whole of the scriptures, because people spoke and thought and acted in different ways. But all under the direct guidance of God, for he gave them his word. And the Lord himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledges this totally. He makes, of course, reference to the prophets, the Old Testament scriptures uh, in his ministry. There's one particular time just after his resurrection. You remember this, surely, that the two of the disciples are making their way to the village of Emmaus, and they were distressed, they were worried, they were concerned because of all the things that had been happening. They couldn't, they couldn't work it out. Why was it that the Lord they uh, had been serving, why was it that he was crucified? And then there was all this talk of his resurrection, and this man joined them. Walked along and was talking. They were talking about all these things of how uh, disturbed they were with this, and he began to speak to them of the scriptures in luke 26 uh, and verse 27 we read and beginning with moses and all the prophets he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself he told them of himself they didn't realize at that point who it was that was saying this they did it a little bit later uh, when they stopped for a meal but not on this occasion not at this point but here's the Lord. And you know, he's not just saying, look, I am the Lord. I have risen from the dead. No. He looks to these prophecies. He looks to these Old Testament prophets, all of them, Moses through to Malachi, whoever, whichever one it might be, that he shows there that he, these things were speaking of himself. And this is the glory of these prophets prophecies as i made reference just a moment ago peter in his second letter says this know this first of all that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation for no prophecy ever produced was ever produced by the will of man but men spoke from god as they were carried along by the holy spirit and of course there are many many prophecies uh, in the Old Testament. Just a couple, uh, one from the book of Genesis where Jacob is blessing his sons. He's speaking to Judah in Genesis 49.10. He says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's star from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. And later, the Daniel, when he's interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream of that statue that worried Nebuchadnezzar so much. And, and uh, during that interpretation, uh, Daniel says, And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. And all these and so many, many others that uh, point to 
the fact that God is working, that God has his plan and he is fulfilling that. And uh, at when these uh, prophets receive this uh, prophecy, this truth, these words from the Lord, they searched and inquired diligently. It wasn't just that they were automatons virtually and they just sort of uh, heard something and just uh, repeated it without it sort of affecting them. They searched into it. They looked into it. Um, the prophets, uh, one commentator says, received God's revelation, but did not always understand what their prophecies meant. However, they did not shrug their shoulders when they failed to understand the significance of their words. Instead, they searched diligently and carefully to determine the meaning of God's word. The prophets took their task seriously, for the words concerned the salvation of man. They just did not repeat by rote what God had said. They searched into it. They inquired about it. They wanted to know more about it, of all that uh, the Lord was saying to them and indeed to others in the future. Uh, the great prophet Isaiah, and uh, in Isaiah chapter 6, we read there the way in which the Lord commissioned him particularly, and he, he, he saw something of the glory of God, that vision of the temple, and the whole of the temple was filled with his glory, and he falls before him and says, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Well, the Lord commissioned him and said he was to, to preach, he was to make uh, the truth known. And he asked this question in verse 11 of Isaiah 6. He says, then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, the Lord said, until cities lie waste and without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is a desolate waste and these words were applied also in the new testament and what what the lord is saying there is that uh, you, you continue preaching that and you continue until that has been uh, brought to fruition but uh, as i wanted to know he, because he was concerned about what he was doing he he, he he was concerned that he was proclaiming the word of god and that word must always be presented in the right from the proper way, which brings us to the next thing in, in verse 11 now, where we read that they were inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicated when he predicted the various things about Christ. They were inquiring, they were really looking into it, and they uh, recorded such amazing things uh, about the Lord. Uh, the prophets, of course, again, the commentator said, Pro the prophets, of course, received God's revelation about the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah prophesied about his birth, his ministry, and his suffering and death. And Micah predicted the place of his birth, Bethlehem, when they prophesied these men were filled with God's Spirit. We're coming up to Christmas and we'll be reminding ourselves of these glorious prophecies concerning the birth of Christ. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then Isaiah 9 and verse 6. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What glorious prophecies. And we see so much indeed. It goes right back to the very beginning of the scriptures in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve first sinned. The promise there was given of the coming of the Messiah, the one who would deal with with theirs and our sin, that we might know the glorious freedom that is in Christ Jesus. And later in that prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 61, we read this in the first two verses. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty of the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, Proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And 
Jesus, of course, took up those very words when he commenced his ministry, when he took the role in the synagogue. He said that this is he. He is the one who is fulfilling these words. You see the glory of the plan here. You see the glory of it all opening up of, and, and the detail that is given to us even in, as we mentioned, in the prophecy of Micah, the very place where the Messiah, where Jesus was to be born. Micah 5 and verse 2, But you, O Bethlehem of Ratha, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is a ruler, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient, or from ancient days. And as they inquired, as they, as they said this, they, we've been told they didn't fully understand it, but they saw something and they realized how glorious, how significant this was. And the predictions that they uh, were bringing concerning, particularly we read uh, in uh, 1 Peter 1, 11, when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. Not the prophet's needs to be pointed out, it wasn't the prophets that predicted what was happening. It was the Holy Spirit using the prophets that predicted all these things that were to take place. And Peter, by saying that it was the Spirit of Christ in them, of course it indicated that the Christ existed long before he came to dwell on earth. He always has been. He's the eternal, everlasting God. But so many people think he was just there during those few years of ministry uh, 2,000 years ago. No, he always has been. He is the eternal and the everlasting God. And also what was predicted about him, particularly, again, we can only take a very small selection because there is so much. And this is why it is so important for us all to read the Old Testament. You know, it, it, it contains so much about Christ. I'm, I'm so saddened when I fear that uh, but the Christians are, are, are not reading the Old Testament. It's a bit difficult. It's a bit hard. Well, we need to think about it. We need to pray about it. We need to work at it. And I know that uh, many may wonder why uh, I've asked you on the daily readings, starting this week, uh, to be reading the Book of Chronicles. The first few chapters are just lists of names. They're not just lists of names. They are showing the way that God works what he is concerned with, how he's going to fulfill his purposes. And they are all part of the scriptures that are given to us for our profit, for our benefit. Uh, and we study those. And to see in that book the, the history of uh, Israel, the history of God's people, it is so important that we do reflect upon those things. But thinking of the sufferings of Christ himself, just just a, a couple of verses. One from Psalm 22 that so clearly speaks of Christ. We read in verse 7, All who seek me mock me. They make their mouths at me. They wag their heads. That psalm shows the rejection of Christ. And again is summed up so powerfully in the words given to Isaiah in Isaiah 53 and verse 3 we read he that's Christ was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief as one from whom men hide their faces he was despised and we esteemed him not those glorious prophecies that are given. I wonder, Paul says to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 3, 15, he says, how, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The Bible is a fully open book which tells us about the riches of salvation we have in Christ Jesus. Therefore, study the scriptures to be wise in respect to salvation. Which brings us to the second verse, the second main point in verse 12, Revelation. Peter says, It was revealed to them 
that they were serving not themselves but you and the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things into which angels long to look. It was revealed to them that there was something more Again, perhaps they did not fully understand it, fully comprehended it, but they knew there was something so much more than the message that they were preaching. Now, many of these prophecies were messages that the uh, prophets actually declared, actually preached to the people at the time and had a very real relevance to them because it challenged them or encouraged them, it taught them. But they realized there's something much deeper, something much greater. And uh, uh, Moses picks this truth up in Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15 when he says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him that you shall listen. He was that glorious prophet, Moses. But the Lord is far greater. The Lord is far more significant. The Lord had given those prophecies, which Peter acknowledges so powerfully and so effectively on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit had come upon them and they went out into the streets of Jerusalem and preached to thousands of people there. And he declared that truth that had been there in the Scriptures for all those years. He made reference to Psalm 16, where David says this, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole spirit rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure, for you shall not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. That was a real truth for David. He knew the truth of the resurrection. He knew that when he died, he'd go to be with the Lord because the Lord had called him. But there's something so much more. And this is what Peter declares so powerfully in Acts 2 in that sermon that he preached on the day of Pentecost. Just part of that, verse 30. Uh, speaking of David, he says, Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Peter saw the truth of that. And how glorious is those many years before, that truth declared in the words of David that points us to that glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the prophets and indeed others have announced. Again in verse 12, it was revealed to them, they were serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced. This is the crux. This is, this is, this is so important. Peter, as I said, has been speaking of that glorious faith. He's been speaking of the born again, of the salvation that is ours. Well, this is what is now announced, that that salvation is that which is in Christ, that he is known, that he is seen, that he is the one who truly is the great and the glorious God. He makes that known. And the, in fact, we read the whole of the New Testament gospel rests on the Spirit's Old Testament testimony that was made through the Old Testament prophets. Cancel that testimony and you remove the basis of the gospel of Christ. And it is the gospel. You know, many people have said to me, over the years, they say, yeah, I, I, I can read the New Testament. I can love the New Testament. The New Testament is the, the book, it, it, all the books of love. I, I can't really abide the God of the Old Testament, of all the wars and all the killings there were, all the judgments that came. Well, you can't have that distinction. There is no dichotomy between the Old and the New Testament. They're all one. They're all God's revealed and precious word and the gospel that Peter and others preached and he's referring to them now find their basis in the Old Testament they didn't have the New Testament uh, Peter, his letter when he was preaching on the day of Pentecost he hadn't even penned that letter 
let alone been able to make reference to it. And, and they preach on the basis of the prophecies of the Old Testament. And this was the command, of course, that the Lord had given to them. The command, of course, was in the end of Matthew, but a more precise way, concise way, in, uh, 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 in, in Mark. We read in Mark 16 and verse 15, you know, the Lord says to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. The gospel of the saving grace of Christ in all that he has done, in all that he is. And so why Paul says in Romans 1.15, I am so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. He really wanted to get to Rome. He really wanted to preach uh, to them because he was so taken up by preaching the gospel, proclaiming the truths presented by those prophets in the Old Testament, revealed to them in that way. When he writes to the Thessalonians, Paul says this in chapter 1 and verse 4, for we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. That's the word. The Holy Spirit was there. And indeed, the Holy Spirit was the one who enabled the prophets, as we've seen, to predict these things. It says in verse 12 again, that those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. That message, the prophecies, were the prophecies that the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, had given. And it was the decorative word of God that was so uh, <clears throat> fundamental and so powerful, so effective. And uh, one commentator says of the Spirit, he says, the Spirit inspired the prophets in Old Testament times. On the day of Pentecost, however, he descended from heaven to guide and direct those who proclaim the gospel. Thus the Holy Spirit directed the apostles and their helpers and gave them divine power so that their message <coughs> was not the word of man, but the word of God. This is the gospel. This is the application of the prophecies. This is what God revealed from the very first verse of the scriptures that in the beginning God created. And how glorious that is. And then the last thing we read that these things are things into which angels long to look. Angels are very powerful beings. Angels are those that obey the word of Christ as soon as that is given. Angels are those that have been used in many ways. Angels surround the throne of God. They're messengers sent by God to serve man who inherits salvation. Rejoice when a sinner repents and gather the elect on the judgment day. Nevertheless, their knowledge of man's salvation is incomplete for they long to look into the mystery of salvation. They don't know the fullness of that salvation. Although as writing the Hebrews reminds us, they are ministering spirits, Hebrews 1 and verse 14, sent to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation. And the Lord, in speaking of the last times in Matthew 24 and verse 31, he says, He will send out his angels at our trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. And the Lord also, in the parable of the prodigal son, there's parables in Luke 15, he says, Luke 15, 7, Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The angels can't understand it. The angels know nothing really of the grace of God. But they glory in God. They honour him. They worship him. Because of that glorious gospel. And all that it has done. How great is the word of God for us. How important is the Bible for us. How vital is our reading and application 
of the scriptures of all the prophecies and the revelation that is given to us through them we're not singing a hymn of course but again I want to quote one hymn that we do not sing as often as others perhaps but it's a lovely hymn written by Anne Steele who was a hymn writer of Baptist in the 18th century and the first verse says Father of mercies in your word what endless glory shines forever be your name adored for these celestial lines and the last verse Divine Instructor, Gracious Lord, be now and ever near. Teach me to love your sacred word and view my Saviour there. And that's indeed what we must do. This is what Peter has been saying. He wants those to whom he writes in that scattered area around Asia Minor who know that rebirth who know that salvation. He wants them to see the glorious authority, importance and strength of the Holy Scriptures. And we need that. We need that word. We need that word watching over us. We need that word teaching us. May we truly be faithful, diligent students of the word of God. Not the word of any preacher, any commentator, but that word of God that must be applied, that must take root in our hearts, that it might truly be the faithful servants of God. Let's pray. We thank and praise you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you we have that word freely available to us. But we know, Lord, that many dislike that word, reject that word, and there are indeed moves in certain parts of the UK to ban that word. Oh Lord, we ask that you would help us to be lovers of your word, to trust in your word, Lord, teach us from your word. And if things are difficult to understand, give us wisdom, give us faith. So, Lord, do be pleased to apply your word to us. Amen. And now, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity. O oh, thou Spirit divine, all my nature refine, till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Amen.